following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Welcome to Gate City Chronicles. I'm Kevin Avard, your host, and today I am joined with Paul Bergeron, and you are, Paul, you're the executive, uh, account executive for the blood services for the Red Cross. Absolutely. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm glad Thank to you have for having me. You. Now, you just told me an interesting tidbit. You, were, you worked for the three owners of Janots. Yes, we, we were uh, talking about... Um, I said, we can talk about pretty much anything. I said, I'm a natural boy, and I don't know. We talked about people that we knew, and actually, uh, Janot's Market, which unfortunately has been in the news with the uh, robbery they, they did have over there. Yeah. Um, but actually, I worked for Mr. Janot, yeah. um, who owned the store forever, obviously, hence Janot's Market. It's the oldest grocery store still in Nashville. I worked for him for a year. I worked for Mike Fair, who owned the store for quite a few years. And then I worked very briefly for Glenn Bingham, who currently owns the store. So I was trying to think one time. I said, I would say I'm in the Janot's Market Hall of Fame, because so many people yeah. through this, you know, over 100 years being in Nashua, um, that the store's been in existence. I yeah. say I'm a, I'm a Janot Hall of Fame. I, I have them as one of the clips for our show here, because in my mind, Janot's has always been a, a staple Absolutely. here in Nashua. And, uh, I remember uh, always traveling to, to Manchester and having to stop at Janot's either to get my popsicles or Absolutely. whatever as a little kid. But uh, anyway, welcome to the show. We're going to be talking about blood drives. We're talking blood drives. Right. Now, so the common question people ask is, you know, where, where do I get, you know, tell me a little bit about the, you know, the disasters and, and how, do, how can I get some uh, services during a disaster. That's not what you do. That's not what we do. You do the, the pre-disaster stuff. You, you, you find the blood. We find the blood. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. There's two sides of the American Red Cross. People are familiar with Con Concord Street. Most people will say to me, oh, you work for the Red Cross. Oh, I know where your office is on Concord Street. I've been there. I've taken a CPR class. Right. I've taken an AED class or a first aid class. And I say, that's great. And it's a wonderful organization. But my, I'm actually based out of Manchester with the blood services side. So the folks on Congress Street are the ones who were just recently have responded to different fires and things throughout the city. Right. Doing a fantastic job. Karen Dudley and the folks over there on Congress Street doing a great job. But we're the blood services side. We're the ones who collect the blood um, that goes to, not, uh, to the hospitals in northern New England. So one part of the northern New England region, which is Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont. We work the three states. Uh, now, I asked you a question earlier also that... You know, when you collect blood, it, it really doesn't have a long life, uh, shelf life, does it? The shelf life of a of blood is 42 days. 42 days. So you constantly need that blood flow. Absolutely. Constant Absolutely. or cash flow of blood, if you Absolutely. will. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. And so your responsibility is to basically uh, administer or, or find places where these blood drives can, can occur. So if somebody says, listen, I got a great idea. We got a great event happening. And you know what? Let's, let's get a blood drive going. They'd contact you. They would contact me. Yeah, right. I'm the one that helps them with the logistics of setting up the blood drives, the promotion, and basically finding out what they want to do. Sometimes it works for us. Sometimes it may not work. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we might tie them into another existing blood drive that we have. But we do work with all fraternal organizations, churches, um, schools, colleges throughout the city and throughout the state uh, that are sponsoring blood drives for us. Now, now, do the people that want to get a, a sponsor a blood drive, do they have to have special insurances? Do they have to go through any type of special uh, hoops to, to get it all going, or do you take care of all of that? We take care of all that. Wow. That's one good thing about the Red Cross, and sometimes people say, we'd love to have you, we're a little concerned. We, we would provide like a certificate of insurance for folks to um, hold the blood drive. So <clears throat> as far as that goes, there's no, pro there's no concern on the part of somebody sponsoring a blood drive. What we're looking for is a site, obviously a large enough site to hold, de depending on what our goal is, but also what we're looking for is support and promotion from the community. Uh, 
who wants to sponsor a book. Right. So like it could be a church, it could be a school, it could be a business. Absolutely. A local business. Absolutely. We go to a lot of businesses actually right here in, in Nashua. Um, we go to a 10, 200 Innovative Way off Exit 1, and that whole area completely, um, uh, the uh, real estate is just booming over there. And so there's a whole bunch of companies in those HP buildings over there. And um, uh, the folks from Amphenol sponsor it, um, and there's... Um, Tom Zips, who's a, the maintenance supervisor over there, uh, would do a blood drives through that company. So those are pli private drives that's scheduled there that is for the employees only, and then those are all scheduled. And now, it, the, the National Guard, they, they have blood drives too. I mean, just you can just think of any organization. Any organization. Well, just, in, just for example, for this week in Nashua, we'll be at the um, Nashua Community College this week. Actually, tomorrow we'll be at St. Christopher's Church on 62 Manchester Street, Right up right. the street from Janot's Market, right. and so very so tomorrow we'll be hanging around at Janot's during the blood drive. I'll be coming back and forth and talking to people uh, there. So we'll be we go there the second Wednesday of every month. We're going to be at National Community College on Thursday with the students, and then on the first and third Thursday of every month we're at the National Elks Lodge. So we're everywhere. We're at, we're at BAE. We're at St. Christopher's. We're wow. at Parish of the Resurrection. So we're pretty much everywhere. Just in Nashua alone, this month we have. Uh, 11 blood drives. Now, do you cover more than just Nashua? Do you cover the whole state? I used to have a, I, I'm very lucky right now that I have Nashua. I did not, when I first came to work for the American Red Cross, I was a volunteer. Um, I, I was, had the opportunity to, to actually go to work for the American Red Cross. My territory was Rochester, Dover, Summersworth, so okay. I really was traveling. Right. And so um, we've had some changes and some good changes for me where now I actually cover Nashua, Derry, Londonderry, East Derry. So I was very fortunate to be right close to home. Now, how do you reach out? Do you, do you actually do, go door knocking or is it through public access, through, through uh, it, papers? It's, it's honestly through it's, pr programs such as this, and we're so happy to be here and so right. happy to have the opportunity to be here. Because um, so many times people go, well, how do I go about? What is the process? And so that's what it is. We love to be uh, out. People will ask us at blood drives. Or sometimes people will call for a specific reason. There's a loved one that might have been a blood recipient or somebody's sick. So we've, we do those kind of drives. Mm -hmm. But we also have blood drives, regularly scheduled drives. And I can't stress the importance of, like, at the Nashua Elks. We're there the first and third Thursday every, every month. And it's from 2 to 7 p.m. And we just need folks to come out and donate. When there is a disaster, if there is an emergency, it's the blood that's on the shelves that is going to save lives. Right. We can't, you know, when there's something happens, sometimes people will come out and we'll get a huge influx of donors for a brief period of time, and then it stops. Yeah. You know, speaking of which, I, I, what is the? You're down right now, right? It, yes. You're always down, but we're always down. Yeah. But you're you're really down. Right? Yes, we're really <laughs> we're really down right now. The economy is affecting us like it's affecting everybody else right now. Um, a lot of you know businesses and places that we used to go to, you know, they've laid off some people, and and, and people wow. are working a little bit harder. So companies are coming to us and saying we really got to move our people through the process, you know. So we're struggling like everybody else. The economy affects not only obviously people's pocketbooks, but it's affecting the blood supply. People just don't have the time. They're working a little harder. Uh, companies can't afford to have, you know, m most companies are wonderful to us because the employees are being paid while they're donating blood. Right. Yeah, obviously. So we yeah. can see in this economy where sometimes folks are doing one, two, and three jobs uh, the way things are going. So it's, it's, it's a little bit tougher. Is it, is it hard for people to get this going? Do you do the advertising for them? Or do they say, listen, I want to sponsor a blood drive. Uh, okay, now what? Okay, the first thing I do, Bill, but generally like people will call me up and say, hey, we're, we're thinking we would like to sponsor a blood drive at our church or, or whatever it might be, um, an Elks Lodge or Lions Hall uh, or something like that. I'll come out and meet with them. What are your goals? What are your expectations? Why do you want to hold, host the blood drive? Sometimes there is a specific reason. Sometimes just because, oh, my mom was a blood donor. My right. dad was a blood donor. Or I heard, I saw something in the paper where you're down and we want to help. And people are really, people are good. You know, right. I see a lot of good in people. You know, it's, Especially uh, in Nashville. We've got so many organizations in Nashville for people that if, if, if you're down, man, you come to Nashua. There's, oh. there's, there's help. <laughs> oh, no. I am so excited to have Nashua. Right. I, I was... Uh, uh, I was at the Nashua Lions last night, and so this is the first little tip of the, of the Nashua Lions. I met with the Nashua Lions last night, and they're celebrating their 90th year this year of being in existence. So they started in 1923, 2013. So all over on Main Street, they have the nice gold Lions banners and celebrating their 90th year. So at the um, chamber celebration uh, that they had and Dare to Begin with the new logo for the city right. on Water Street, yeah. I said to my wife, I'm going to make it my point to, to see Ed Leishas tonight and say, I'd love to hold a blood drive 
and do collect one pint for each year you were in existence. Yeah. So I met with them. I went to their meeting last night. Wonderful folks. And we're actually going to be holding a blood drive in December. We're site to be determined, but we're going to be holding a blood drive, and we're going to try to collect a pint for each year they're in existence. So but mutually beneficial for both organizations. It's a dumb question. Where do you store the blood? Is it, is it at the hospital, or is it? Uh, where, uh, where all the blood in this area would go from wherever the blood drive is in, in, in New Hampshire. So it's a blood drive at the National Elks. It initially would go back to Manchester, New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. And then from Manchester, it will be, uh, a courier will come and it will be taken to Dedham Mass for the testing of the blood okay, so before they, it is released to the hospital. Right, there are, yeah, it obviously has to be screened. Is there a particular type of blood that, that's always in demand? O negative blood. O negative? Pretty much O negative blood. Only, yep, only 7% of the people actually have o, o negative blood, but O negative is the universal blood type. So it's funny, if somebody's a first time blood donor, and especially if they happen to be an O negative blood donor, and they say, wow, this is a great experience, like we'll be at the community college on Thursday. And so we'll have a first time blood donor, and they might say, oh, this is a wonderful experience. How will I ever find out about a thing? And I said, do you know what your blood type is? And, and if they happen to know, and they say, oh, I'm an O negative, I go, pretty much we'll be calling you the rest of your life. <laughs> I think I'm actually O positive myself. Yeah, uh, we, we take O positive yeah. too, absolutely. But all blood types are always needed, and that's what we're trying to stress, folks. We really need you to come out to a regularly scheduled blood drives, in addition to other blood drives, because we love doing events. We love doing events like we're going to be doing with the Lions. But it's just so important that people do come out. We were at St. Christopher's the second Wednesday of every month. We are counting on that drive to collect 60 pints of blood. If for whatever reason wow. it doesn't, that's how we fall behind. Like the goal is 60, we need 60. Right. In order to reach our daily and monthly goals. What's, what's the youngest somebody can donate? How, how young? Uh, actually, uh, it was just changed to the New Hampshire legislature where you, a 16-year-old can donate blood with parental permission. Oh. So they need written parental permission. There's a form. It was just passed, I think, in the last couple, two or three years. Uh, prior to that, if you're 17, you can pretty much donate blood as long as you have an ID. So you don't even have to be 18. So we're wow, in a lot of the high schools and things. Yeah. Yeah, and of course you you can't have a fever and all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So you you set up the guidelines and the requirements for people, and they're already there. People can come in. Now, how, what's your team like? You know, okay, we got a blood drive. Uh, who gets who musters all that together? Do you do that? Yes, I, I am the coordinator as far as working with the folks. We're, what we're going to do is try to look at the space that we're at. You know, how many employees are about how many donors that we think we may be able to uh, be able to handle in the site that we're in, and what what's our goal and expectation? So we might run a blood drive. We might bring our boss. I don't know if you've seen the big donor coach. Um, we, you know, we'll be out of Hannaford's. We're we're at Hannaford's. <clears throat> excuse me, at Exit Six a lot. We take that to businesses and companies that might not have space to go inside. So on that particular day, the goal might be twenty, you know, twenty pints of blood. But we also have drives that we run that would be two hundred and fifty pints of blood, seven hundred pints of blood. Right. So another question is, you you are run <coughs> by basic donations, correct? It, do you, that's how you're paying for all yes. this. Yes, yeah. The Red Cross Blood Services, we're a nonprofit, obviously. Uh, it's cost recovery. So pretty much whatever it costs for us to collect the blood is passed on to the hospitals, um, whatever the processing fee is for us to collect. Right. So that's a question I'm sure a lot of people have. Well, you know, I gave the blood free, and then I went to the hospital, and they charged me $300 for Absolutely. a pint of blood. Absolutely. Well, it costs a lot of money to get it that blood. It costs a lot of money. And there's a lot of regu regulations um, right. through the FDA, and rightly so. We want to have and ensure that we have a safe blood supply. So we do have to have those regulations. But like everybody else right now, we're looking at costs and trying to do everything we can to reduce our costs, as most companies, both for-profit and non-profit, are doing right now. So we want to get the most cost-effective, but most importantly, the safest blood that we can get out to the blood recipient. Now, as far as your volunteers, are, are the people paid staff or that, that do these blood drives, or are they volunteers? Or, uh, it's, or a is... it's actually a combination of both. So like when we go to the um, Elks Drive, um, the Emblem Club of the National Elks, in addition to the Elks members themselves, but the Emblem Club of the National Elks are the, the sponsors of the blood drive. So they donate the space to us. They provide food. They're wonderful folks. They nice. provide food for us, chili and American chop suey, every Thursday, the, the first and third Thursday of every month. It's good for the blood. It's good for the blood. <laughs> and uh, people like it, and they're, and they're wonderful to us. They're volunteers, obviously. So mm -hmm. they provide the registration. They provide the food. They work the canteen area. All the folks who actually do the health histories um, of the donors and actually collect the blood are paid staff. And that has changed. Wait, somebody was telling me that today. So remember when we had all volunteers doing that? And now with the regulations, 
that it's not done that way. So it is all paid, trained American Red Cross, right. either trained phlebotomists or nurses. Interesting. And so what are the up and coming events right now? You have obviously the Lions and uh, you, you have your annual ones. What's your goal as far as um, uh, reaching out to the public? I mean, what's a realistic goal for you is for new businesses in the next six months, if you will? Well, and then, uh, that's what we're doing. We're, right now, the blood supply is so low. So we're looking for new and existing companies. Right now, I'm focusing in the Nashua area. We have a lot of community drives in the Nashua area, and it's mm -hmm. fantastic. You know, I, I mentioned the, the community drives that we have, and the Elks, and St. Chris, and a lot of the churches and things that we go to that are open to the public. Right now, what I'm specifically looking for, and you know, the Red Cross, we've recently joined the Nashua Chamber of Commerce, and we belong to other chambers throughout the state. We're trying to look for organizations and businesses that would allow us to come in. Because that's where there we can, if we go to a closed company business, we can pretty much be planned a little bit better by pre-signups on how many donors we're going to get, thereby reducing our costs and providing better services to the companies. And it's a nice way for a company to give back to the community also. Right. So the blood that is extracted from Nashua, does it stay in Nashua or does it get dispersed throughout the state? Some of the blood may stay in Nashua. Some of them might be throughout the state. Some might go through northern New England. Some might go, could go across the country. It's dependent on the blood supply. And what's really nice is a few years ago, they, they started saying blood without borders because people would say to me, oh, when I donate at, at St. Christopher's, is the blood going to southern New Hampshire? Is the blood going, because that's where the hospital that I go to. Is the blood going to mm. um, St. Joseph's? Because that's the hospital that we go to. And I said, it may or it may not, or it may go to New York. And I said, really? And so the blood's going to go where it's needed. Right, if there's a tornado disaster out west or something Absolutely. like that. Absolutely. And so all the labeling and things changed in the last few years. And if somebody's a regular blood donor, they know that we've gone through a lot of changes on the process that we actually do, the phlebotomist process and the health histories and the questions and the things. And it's so that all blood banks across the country are using pretty much the same process. So in the event of any kind of disaster or emergency across the country, anybody, any company that a hospital or a company that collects blood could pass blood along to each other as needed to, obviously. Now, do you, do you have a, a certain number per population that, of, of pints that you need to, to collect? You know, if there's 100,000 population or 60,000, what, are, are there certain expectations in, in that type of uh, uh, population that, that should be on a regular basis? Um, I don't know if that makes sense to you. Uh, yeah, I kind of I kind of see where you're going. We're actually um, for for instance, what what should be the expectation for Nashua versus say Franklin? Franklin's eight thousand population. Oh yeah, well, uh, it's somebody like Fran a, a town like Franklin, we may go there once every eight weeks, maybe three four times a year. We're in Nashua ten times this month, and we're collecting over five hundred pints in Nashua, and it's not enough. Wow. And it's not enough. So people say, oh, I don't know if we want to do a blood drive. You have a lot of blood drives. That's why it's so great that you know, we were able to reach out to the folks at the Nashua Lions. And it was wonderful that they were able to accommodate us. Because I know that's going to be new, new blood, so to speak. You know, we'll get different people that will come out. Yeah. How, how, how often can somebody actually safely donate blood? Every eight weeks, every 56 days. But the average, donor, the average regular donor donates less than two times per year. Mm. So it's trying to. Obviously, we need, to, <laughs> we need to increase the folks who donate, right. say, oh, I donated in the spring. It's like, great, but if, you, if at all possible, could you come back out one more time? You know, it's like anything else. If we could get each donor to donate one more time per year, then we wouldn't have this problem. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, that's, you know, it's, it's funny because we're always going around the road by the, our church uh, up the road, and, and we'll see blood drive. Hey, we've got to do that. Yeah. Oh, busy. Absolutely. You know, and people are busy. People and, are very busy. Uh, but uh, it doesn't take that long to do. It doesn't. It doesn't. And we're, we're encouraging folks. We went to an appointment system uh, a couple years back. And, and again, you know, we've had our times where it's like you're doing our best to honor the appointments. Um, but we encourage folks to schedule an appointment. And that way there we can plan on how much staff oh. that we're actually bringing. So. That's new. I didn't understand that. Right? that yeah. uh, we still take walk-ins, but right. we are highly encouraging if you go to 1-800-RED-CROSS or redcrossblood.org, you can schedule it right online. So we were talking earlier about, you know, like Nashua Patch, where a lot of times there might be a link. You know, you just go right to the link. You can do it right from your phone. It's like, yep, okay, I've just scheduled my appointment. Great. Na Nashua Patch is a great service. Absolutely. They, they alert you to a lot of neat little things, and uh, I use it regularly. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> I do Very too. good. So how, pe how do people get in touch with you? So if somebody was looking to schedule a blood drive and just has any questions, they could call either our Manchester office, and that's 1-800-262-2660, 
or they could just send me an email at paul.bergeron at redcross.org or call my cell phone, which is 494-9436. Oh. But the best way, there's a lot of numbers there, and I said it fast, but the best way is really to go to the Red Cross website. If you go to redcrossblood.org and you just put in your zip code, you will have more information than you ever wanted about sponsoring a blood drive, about finding a blood drive in your area. If a donor just moved to the area, if they were, if said, oh, geez, I wouldn't mind donating blood in the next week or so, or, right. or uh, wow, I hear the Red Cross, uh, or there's a need for blood right now. If you put in your zip code, you'll get, a blood, you'll get blood drive locations within 10 miles of your home, and you'll, you'll have plenty of options. Very interesting, very good. Um, any final thoughts for our guests? Uh, I just just tr encouraging folks to really come out and donate at regularly scheduled blood drives. In the event when there are disasters or other emergency, people are wonderful and they do come out. And like you said earlier, people are very busy. But because we can respond to these disasters in a timely manner and have the blood on the shelf, it's because of our regularly scheduled donors. So I right. just would encourage folks: if you're donating, if you've never donated, please donate. If you've uh, if you're a donor, bring a friend with you. And if you donate once a year. Could you, would you consider donating one more time for Do us? Do it twice. Very good. Yeah. All right. Well, I want to thank you for coming on the show, and thank you for the hard work that you're doing. Great. We appreciate well, it. Well, thank you so much, it, and it, I appreciate it. It's nice to know that there's blood out there when you need it, and it's because of people like you that are behind the scenes. Great. Thank you Great. so much. I appreciate it. All right. Well, that's it for now. Thank you for watching Gate City Chronicles, and we want to thank our sponsor, Aardvark Dean of Clean, the carpet cleaner in Nashua. You can reach him at 603-630-1743. And if you would like some more information about Gate City Chronicles or want to be a guest, contact me at gatecitychronicles at gmail.com. Until next week, thanks for watching. Seating program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.